Welcome to this Way to Fire YouTube hobby vlog. Uh, it's me, Andy, and I'm just going to be showing you where I'm up to with my new Perry Miniatures Franco-Prussian War models. So, uh, as you can see, I've done a few different types of ones, which I'll show in a moment. So, we're going to start off with some Prussian cuirassiers. These were the first models released by Michael Perry. Um, so I already had a unit of these done using their foundry models. Uh, they're not great in comparison for size because they're slightly larger now, the newer ones. So I have had to paint a new set, of course. So this is um, the Magdeburg uh, cuirassier uh, with their yellow uh, facings. And the reason I've picked these is because I'm going to focus my army on, well, both sides of the army on the Battle of Mars Latour um, on the 16th of August 1870 because it's a very good battle from the point of view of having lots of different units involved. It was just outside Metz. It was a relatively close run thing. Uh, the Prussians were sort of strategically victorious. I guess they were tactically perhaps lost. Um, and so uh, there's a couple of really sort of interesting elements in that. The Imperial Guard are there for the French and for the Prussians. Um, and, and plenty of different sort of units and some cavalry charge as well. So fairly good from the point of view of lots of different things being able to be done. Now, there was also a cavalry charge, including this regiment, with some uh, Erlans as well, which I'll paint next, um, called Bredo's Charge. Bredo was the, uh, von Bredo was the brigade commander, and they did a absolutely foolhardy sort of battle of, uh, sorry, Battle of Balaclava Charge Light Brigade style uh, charge to temporarily disrupt the French cannon, uh, which they succeeded in doing, um, but at the cost of 50% casualties to the charging squadrons. Um, and these Karate were one of them. Uh, this one, I still need to do his, I'm waiting for a flag to arrive, so I haven't done his banner yet, um, but this is the officer. Um, and so yeah, that's why I've that's why I've done them like this. I've just based them with Vallejo uh, thick mud and uh, Geek Gaming Tiaga hillside flock, which I think gives a reasonable appearance. They're mostly painted with Games Workshop and um, Vallejo paints. And I've tried to add a few different bits to the horses, you know, flashes and stars and noses uh, being different colours. I'm not a fan of painting horses, I'll be honest. Uh, so I found these a bit of a challenge. It took me a while to do them, but they are done. So here's some of the infantry that I have done. These are just some of the first models I did as skirmishing ones from the uh, plastic box. These are all the plastic ones. Um, you can see nice skirmishing poses, shooting, and make a good firing line. Uh, I've painted these to, I can't remember which brigade it is, but you can only tell really by the uh, uh, blue, well in this case blue, um, Shoulder pads, or shoulder tabs, sorry. Um, otherwise, the uniform is virtually the same. There are some slight differences on cuffs and stuff like that. It can be, it's relatively easy to find this stuff out, but it can be a bit confusing. Um, it really doesn't matter. You could just use the inset um, from the box and that give you perfectly all you needed information wise. Um, you can see this guy just taking some ammo out to load in his Dre's rifle. Uh, a bit outdated at this stage, the Dre's, but. Um, certainly compared to the Chaspo that the French had. And you can see here on the side actually, he's got this uh, sword knot. So this has got three different colour components to it, which told you which battalion and which company they're in. And I've painted it white over white over white, which means it's the first company of the first battalion. Um, but I will do some others perhaps, or else if I can be bothered. It's sort of unnecessary stuff, but you can do that of course if you want to. We have a casualty. Um, you get one casualty in every box, uh, no sorry, one casualty on every sprue, I tell a lie, sorry, so you, get, you will get quite a few. Uh, I've just based this one individually, um, just to throw down as some sort of disorder marker, depending on the game I'm going to be, the game system I'm going to be using, uh, or just to sort of show the battlefield as it was. I've also done one unit to a one base so far, um, of them running at the trail, so I have done all of these guys with the slightly older helmet there with the brass strap down the back. Um, 
I think, from what I can see of, of historical pictures of the time, both types of helmet, the 1860 and 1867 helmet, were both used in the same units, um, which perhaps doesn't quite fit with the standard image of the German sort of organisational aspect, but I guess um, some people might have had the choice to retain it, or they just didn't get enough each time, uh, or maybe just changed in the field as people lost them and so on. The individual differences on the helmets themselves you can't really see in 28mm, with my painting anyway, but uh, I think they look pretty good. And I'll base most of my units in this way so that they um, are marching or uh, the advancing ones are in this sort of pattern on the basis. They look better on the multi basis in those cases. And the final model I want to show off is the free model that comes when you buy three packs direct from Perry Minches. And this is uh, Karl Friedrich von Steinmetz. So he was a uh, major general, later field marshal. Uh, of the Prussian army um, and he's wearing a sort of standard uniform here but with a overcoat uh, rather than the sort of dress one and these sort of silvered bullion um, sash that they wore. Uh, it's a relatively plain and economical sort of uniform really um, with his big white hair sticking outside. So uh, Steinmetz was a bit of a, he was well liked by his troops apparently but he was a bit of a um, controversial character at the time and since because whilst he'd done very well in the war of 1866 against Austria um, getting victories at the battles of Nashad and Skalitz he uh, was in charge of first army the smallest of the three armies in the Franco-Prussian war um, and was very aggressive but sort of aggressive without thinking as well um, and he encouraged his subordinates to think in a similar way so certainly led to some significant risk uh, that the French had been perhaps a bit more aggressive or confident they could actually have inflicted some significant defeats onto the Prussians, both at uh, Spikeren, um, one of the first border battles, but uh, perhaps more importantly his contribution at the Battle of Gravelo saint prevat where he just kept feeding more and more and more troops into a defile and the Mance uh, Ravine, sorry, where um, the, Prussia, uh, sorry, the French could just basically shoot them down. Um, and thousands of Prussians probably died unnecessarily there. Um, after that he was actually removed from command and sort of moved sideways um, into a governorship somewhere else in Germany. Um, so yeah, he was sort of effectively removed from the theatre operations. Um, to be fair, I think, you know, yeah, he was very aggressive, but um, there were plenty of people, particularly Moltke, who gets a lot of uh, fame and credit for the franco prussian War, he could easily have stepped in at any point to uh, deal with Steinmetz, but chose not to. Um, I suspect that's because Moltke was probably more of a planner than uh, a field general and perhaps didn't like concentration in quite the same sort of way. So he's certainly a controversial figure, but it's great to have him. Um, I have put him on a 40 millimeter base, so I'll use him as a brigade or divisional commander, depending on what I want him to be as. So anyway, that's uh, all I wanted to show you, just where I'm up to. I'll continue plodding on with the Prussians, and they've just released um, the French and some Prussian artillery, so I shall be getting those and some French uh, chasseurs as well. Um, sorry, Voltigers, so I shall be getting those as well. No, oh, chasseur, chasseur pied. Yeah, so I will be getting those as well, and hopefully you'll see them painted up soon. So thanks very much, everyone. Bye.